it. I'm sick of him taking my money. And then acting like I'm not a real member. Um, they're showing uh, the elf uh, today. Um, the Will Ferrell movie. And I like Elf. I can't remember Elf. I seen it like years ago in my store. Like when I had the video store. Um, I remember it being funny. But I can't like remember the movie or whatever. And I thought about uh, stopping by this Christmas event. And going to check out Elf. I probably grab something to eat and head over there. I was just trying to stay in Compton since I was going to church tomorrow. I was keeping my life simple. And since I'm just one train stop away from the church, I was like, cool. Like, that's the other part. Like, I don't, I don't have no energy for, like, people that's trying to make me feel fucked up about going to church again. Like, I'm not a typical church person anyway. Like, I go to church because I need to feel the presence of God. And I, I, like, I need that. It's so much stuff that be around me and, you know, whatever, that I need that. I don't really ever get involved in, like, church politics and all that other stuff that be happening in churches. Like, the minute people be full of all that stuff, that's when I go to the left. But, um, specifically the church I started attending, I started attending them because they remind me of my church in Chicago, Salem. And that church specifically was involved in the community a lot. They weren't just, you know, hey, let's have service, let's have a praise and worship team, and let's, oh, Father, 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 Father. They were actually out in the community talking to people, feeding people, doing stuff. You know, making community connections, taking the neighborhood back from the gangs. They was like really doing it. And they were doing it with prayer. Like that was the other part that was like hilarious on a whole lot of levels. Like on, on a like they seriously were doing it with prayer. But, you know, like it, on a, a philosophical level, that's like hilarious because people got real guns in these streets. Motherfuckers is really killers out here. And it's like, no, in the name of Jesus, you're going to put that gun down. But they really do it, though. <laughs> Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not funny, but it is. It's like they they really was though. Like, you, like, like that guilt hit them. Like I ain't trying to. All right, all right, Bob. Like, <laughs> they got the pistol in their head. <laughs> no, but see, no, fuck that. It, it, uh, okay, well, you know what? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. They put it in their little back. All right, let, let's talk. Now, what can God do for me? <laughs> like, <laughs> like they, like you know what I mean? But. It was really happening like that. Like, people was really, like, getting saved. Like, they was real, like, for real. Real killers, real, like, people, right? That was like, all right, well, you know what? You know, and, like, really deciding to do something different. And here's the deal, right? That's why I don't... That's why I don't like talking about it too much sometimes because it's just, like, people got their own perception. Like, everybody has, like... Uh, well, no, not everybody because everybody don't, like grow up in like Christian scenarios or whatever but what I want to say specifically black people because how slavery fed us Christianity and we got like the bullshit treatment like I can speak on our experience I can't really speak on everybody else's but specifically with black people right like how slavery was fed and we got fed Christianity and stuff like we when we grew up in church and, and all that stuff it's like all of these like limiting rules and limiting you know things right that was whatever and it's like, you know, that's kind of like the slave religion or whatever that we inherited. So, you know, for like, you know, my friends that are more, you know, um, spiritually aware and advanced and they also, you know, know the truth and yada, yada, yada. It's like when you talk about going to church, you know, they be like looking at you like you failed. <laughs> They be looking at you like you failed as an intellectual and, and you failed, you know, knowing the historical context of like Christianity and what it did to black people, whatever, whatever. Like they be looking at you like you just go keep going down to that, that church, huh? You know, and I get it. You know what I mean? However, for me, it's deeper than that. It's one of those. Hey, that's what I know because I was introduced to that because my mom was a preacher's daughter. 
And what I do know as a kid that knew nothing about slavery, religion, and, you know, oppression and racism and all of that stuff. Like when that was not in my consciousness and in my psyche, right? What I felt from God was real. What I felt in the, in the presence of God, like forget all the other like foolishness. What I felt in that, I knew it, I recognized it immediately, it was real. And I know that presence when I feel it and when it's around me and that presence has saved me from myself <laughs> and so many other things. Now, um, I can honestly go on record and speak that presence don't be everywhere. Just because people put up a church and, you know, say hallelujah and all that stuff. Yeah, no, um, it don't be everywhere. But in real instances where I can like really honestly feel like, oh, no, you know, God did stop by here and he... He is working through some people up in here, and I, I like that. I, I can recognize that. I can feel that. I can I can get healed here. Those are the places where I go ahead and park the car and just take a little pit stop and, you know, enjoy the church and the services, right? So um, this church specifically that I, I go to now um, in Compton was one of those churches that I felt that and did that. Because, like, like I said, it reminded me from my church from home. Um, and there's other places where, you know, I felt it, I feel it, you know, cause it's an energy that is, is within that, like it gives off, you know, but I don't live or I didn't live in the, um, the locales of where they were located. Once again, plenty of people out there faking the funk in the streets, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not into that whole, that ain't my, hold on, let me see. That ain't my job. Of, I don't care to do all that uh, exposure. And all, I don't really care. Like, I be on when it comes to that type of stuff. I be on the law of attraction type. Yo, the stuff that you focus on expands. I'm not trying to focus on people uh, doing the wrong thing. I'm trying to focus on people doing the right thing. So let me just focus on that. And so that's where I get my little attention. Blah, 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 blah. But this is my membership code. So why the fuck is anything different ever coming up? Okay, so we're going to have to settle this once and for all at the front desk. Yeah, so I was on my account. I notice every time I try to log into my account, it, it tries to tell me that it's not my account. Uh... And I know what I put in when I do my membership stuff. And it's trying to tell me that's not correct. And I'm like, yes, it is correct. Because I show up in the computer every time. Uh, so we got to figure out why that is, 24-hour fitness. What, what y'all got going on? What y'all trying to pull? What are y'all doing? Um, see, this pisses me off. Because I wanted to work on Patreon today. I wanted to watch this webinar by Mariah Cause. You know, I came here because this is a a, um, a Starbucks that's open till 11:30. Okay, my gym is across the street right here. There's a Target right here. You know, I can get like what I need from Target or what have you. And then my church is one train stop up. So I came down here for that. I don't have to listen to you. You're not a woman and you don't know what you're talking about. Enjoy being a man. Now, dude trying to tell me about my wig. Dude, worry about your life, okay? Worry about pleasing your partner. How about that? Like, eh. are you even good in bed while you sitting up here trying to tell women what they need to do? You know what I'm saying? While he's sitting up here judging me, his partner probably looking at him like, you can work on your head game. How about that? Mind your business. That be the problem. People don't be minding their motherfucking bitch. Listen, shout out to Abraham Hicks. I'm Abraham Hicks. I'm, I uh, I discovered like her work. She been around since the '80s. I ain't discovered her since 2015. But it's the realest shit, man. You like minding your business. It's just the like when you for real. Like when you be like, oh, okay, that but that's none of my business. Like you can look and observe and shit. But to be like, oh, that's none of my business. And keep it moving. Listen, it's the most freeing thing that you could ever fucking do. Like, just sometimes if you don't be that serious, it's like, ugh, it's none of my business. I don't care. I really be trying to mind my goddamn business. 
until people bring bullshit to my doorstep and then be wondering why I don't either A, I don't fuck with them or B, you know, why I went off on them the way I did. What? What now? What are we doing? Hold on, y'all. Kimberly Coles, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Right. Okay. What the fuck is this? No, this is some foolishness. Um. Hold on, y'all. So, yeah. I'll probably... See, the only thing is... For me to do that, I gotta... Travel again. And I'm trying to see if I even want to do that. See, that's the, the other problem I have. Like, you know, people treat me that like what I'm doing is not so exciting. And it's like, okay, well, you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to come. You don't have to be involved. Like, go do something else. Sick of these people. I proved what I needed to prove, though. So I win as far as that's concerned. Yikes. this part see yeah like somebody just posted a meme I believe in God not because my parents told me to not because the church told me to but because I witnessed how awesome he is that's exactly how I feel I wouldn't even be here and it's like people are so quick to laugh at it and do whatever it's like alright let you have a supernatural experience you gonna be saying the same thing I'm saying and you gonna be like Hey, I told God if you save my life, I won't stop talking about you. So, sorry guys. <laughs> None of you have the power to save my life. So, guess what? Oops. <laughs> that part. Alright, because now I know I've attracted the peanut gallery. I don't even want to be in here no more. Like, just watching different family members of the Lopez family show up on my social media and doing the most even like the people like it's just been too much and I was like there's a whole lot of Latino anger being uh, like directly directed at me and I was like it's his family I've done more with their last name than he ever did than he ever did and sure enough this morning like that was like showing up and I was just like hey fuck him I don't in all the years that I've been divorced and all of that stuff y'all don't ever really hear me talk about him too much I share real life experiences cause I'm a comedian and I'm a public figure and I can talk about my real fucking life but even when I talked about my real fucking life I never like said anything that was like too personal or embarrassing or tried to make him look fucked up I always said he had a good heart I always kept it positive but baby 
that nigga was trying to come up and he failed. Like it don't it don't take much to see a motherfucker that like you know who they really are when shit ain't what you you know when shit ain't really hot and dope. That's how you find out the fabric of a motherfucker. That's one of the main reasons why even when I first met Fifth, I came with some no, I don't want nothing from you. What can I do for you? Like I don't I'm good. How are you? You like no, I'm fine. How are you? Like that's why I was that I know what it feels like for people to do people that way. They always do it to me. I got to stay hot. I have to. I don't have a choice. I'm not loved if I'm not. Facts. Rappy talking all that shit. Rappy, man, when we sat down and we had them floor seats, Rappy couldn't shut the fuck up. My brother hooked all that shit up. We sat there, got drunk as fuck. Eating Giordano's pizza, all that stuff. They put me on the Jumbotron, wish me happy birthday, like all that stuff. And that was the day after he said what he really felt because he thought I was pregnant. And he thought he trapped me. That's when it was, oh, you shouldn't do comedy. All that shit. So then I divorce you. I get the fur for Christmas. You see me at the Jay-Z concert. I'm living my life. You, you didn't want to like put your money together and pull with me and be a couple. And pull our funds together so we could get you a car. But you want to drive my bins and look all... Okay. But we, we were supposed to pull our funds together and get you a car. So that we could both be rolling. Now, the winter comes. And now, the we have the worst winter in 50 years. My car wasn't a new car. But I kept it fly. And... Uh, that car, compared to every car I've ever owned, like, Benz make their cars really well. My favorite cars out of all the cars I ever owned was my Camry, my Corolla, my Accord, my Benz. Four. All of those four cars were liable. It don't matter what year you purchase them. If you got a good mechanic and you actually, you know, put the right gas in it, that was another thing. People kept, you know, people want to use your shit and be cheap. And, and, and they don't have the money to repair things when things go broken. You can't put cheap-ass gas in that car. You got to use unlimited. So what? It's fucking 40 cents more. The car will last. He was doing ignorant shit like that because he's a poverty-minded person. I wasn't. I never was. Yeah, I go through periods of up and down and up and down because I was trying to figure it out and I'm always by myself and I always have to figure it out because people in my life have not been reliable. And I'm trying to do something in entertainment that really ain't been done before. Yeah, there's people that do all kinds of stuff, but y'all ain't really never seen no black female really get down and do what she wants to do and be all over the place and be Carol Burnett. Like, there has been people who've had that abilities, but they didn't get the shine they deserved. And that's true. Like, they, like, Ellen Clayhorn was somebody who was that way. Like, oh, I, no, I, I'm a comedian. I know this. Like, she was that way. She didn't get that, she didn't get that shine, though. You know what I'm saying? People have to, Nisi Nash is somebody who has that. You know what I'm saying? But they don't. People don't, and, and, and she's getting the love she deserves and the respect she deserves as an actress because she did that. But y'all don't be like fucking with us like that, and I know that. So it's like, yeah, like I don't have time for these some tiny people coming in here doing ignorant stuff. So, like, fast forward the car, you know, now I'm carless. You the husband. You wanted to attach yourself to me so bad. I got all these motherfuckers coming out the woodwork like this. Who you married? For real? Uh, if you would have been mad, I would have did. You know how Satan do. You know, all that goofy shit. I got to deal with that. But this motherfucker complains every day that we're together. Every day. Every day this motherfucker was complaining. Nigga, get the fuck out of my life then. Bye. I don't need this shit. So he did all of that. Gave me them weak ass flowers for my birthday, all of that shit. I'm oh baby, you thought of me. Oh baby, blah, 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 blah. My brother showed up and showed out the next day, made everything he did look like trash. My brother always does that. My brother called me up, well, back when we was cool. Hey Ryan, I got a bottle of Don Perignon. What the fuck we doing? Like, yo shit, Tony, I'm on. Let, let's go. My brother. So no, I don't have time to be arguing with a nigga over some four dollar fries or whatever the fuck. I don't. For what? What are we doing? 
fast forward, we divorce, I get the BMW station wagon, now Francis want to drive it. Nigga, what the fuck? No. This was for, you know, me having kids, if I need to, you know, this is for the next life, whatever I'm building. These are for car seats and bicycles and shit. So, now people are like, oh, well, damn, that didn't stop her. We want her to fail. Okay, fine. That BMW was a bad buy, y'all. It, it gave me so many problems. And like I said, you got to pay for that maintenance. The maintenance ain't cheap. And it felt like every time I turned around, like a steering, um, what you call it, or um, a, 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 um, a steering pin or, you know, all kind of stuff would like come out and fall out and all this shit, you know. Um, it just, you know, it just had all, it, every time I turned around, it needed something. My Benz wasn't that way. It just, it would just ride. You keep unlimited gas in it. You stay on, the oil changes was key. The oil, because they, they put real fleece, they have fleece filters and, you know, it's, it's real specific how they built those cars. So the oil changes is key. You stay on top of the oil changes, don't you let that car go and all of that without all the oil changes. You put the right gas in it and the car just performs. It drives like a dream and you feel like you're driving a nice dope ass leather couch. It's amazing. You know, but you got to take care of it. And, you know, you're trying to introduce people to things and you're trying to bring people along with you because you're like hey you know it's okay if we're committing to this and this is what we got then we good but then the minute things weren't all the way awesome oh I don't think you need to do this oh yeah so I get wilding out the next year like within what like yeah like within the next year because December 23rd 2013 is when it was a wrap okay uh, January 9th, 2015 is when it was a go. And when we were dating, I tried out for it the first time and didn't get it. So, now that I got you out the way and I'm on it, damn. And now you have to watch me on TV. Yeah. So now you're from New York and you got New York people and your family is deep in New York and you real New York and New York is awesome. And so you know some New York secrets. I don't get no fuck. And? And? I was still doing me. I was still happy. And I didn't give... I wasn't... I didn't miss you. So all of this was supposed to make me miss you. It still failed. You can still be bitter and have your little six, seven damn Facebook pages. That was the reason why you got unfollowed. I tried to be your friend after I was your ex-wife. But the reason why I unfollowed you in the first place is because you was just on your pages being bitter like you was a fucking victim. But while we were married, you complained every fucking day like you were a victim. I'm sitting up here like, man, yo, sex is trash. And I'm got, I gotta take this? We started out cool. What happened to the nigga that was making me squirt six times? What, 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 where, 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 where did we go wrong on that? Now I'm putting up with this and all this mouth and I make the most. The fuck? Nigga, if you don't get the fuck out of my life. So yeah, y'all little corny ass motherfuckers can stay on my Facebook, stay on my Instagram, stay on my YouTube, make your little six, seven troll accounts, tag me and whatever, text me and whatever. I still don't want them and I still don't regret letting that relationship go. He was not the man I needed in my life. Time proved it then. It's proven it again. It'll continue. It'll be. It'll be true twenty years from now. It's been six years. I don't even talk about him. The most he gets is I was married before. Somebody, oh, you, you let, last name is still Lopez. Hey, motherfucker! It took me six to seven months to get all of my paperwork and everything rectified because I got married. Because I actually did something with my life. I had to go all the way back and rectify shit I filed with the Library of Congress. Because I had shit copywritten. I don't want to go through all of that again if I'm not going to keep the names. Because the thing that happens to women that don't happen to men, we have to change our identity for you motherfuckers. It's work. I don't want to have to keep doing that shit. So yeah, I made a name. I, I made a name for Ronald Lopez. Good for me. They don't have no problem dropping that shit and being you the name like Rihanna. I don't get no fuck. I'ma still be me. And you still will be you. And God bless that.